This Asian mom on TikTok with full Asian children just told younger Asian women to make mixed race babies because they're more gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Emily, maybe your deepest, darkest thoughts should not be shared on TikTok or else you will have to bear the consequences. That's some food for thought. Let's run the clip. Here's my hack for the Asian gals who are young, not married. One day you want to get married. You want to have kids. You don't have the love of your life yet. If you want to have gorgeous kids, marry someone not Asian. Those mixed race babies are gorgeous. And it's too late for my kids. They're full Asian, but it's up to you. You can do it. Boom! Oh That's the original God. viral clip. However, Andrew, she did have uh, several apologies or follow-up videos. Let's run those as well. I have two daughters, and this is why they are not going to be on social media for as long as possible. Personal story edition. I am close to 40 years old, and for most of my life, I have felt like an upstanding citizen, someone with morals, uh, someone who's likable. And within one day, with just one less than one minute post that I did, hundreds of strangers made me feel like a villain. Now I'm questioning myself and I am close to 40 years old. Imagine this happening to teenagers, to tweens, even to ladies in their early 20s, early 30s. I feel like I'm the most confident I've been in my life, and yet strangers who don't know me at all have made me question myself in such a short amount of time. So maybe I'm just not cut out for it. Oh man, if you wanna talk about, I guess, how to go viral very quickly in a method, I guess, that was unbeknownst to her, perhaps she was naive, perhaps she was ignorant, Andrew, what's going on? How to offend Asian men on the internet 101. Uh, Listen, guys, I think she got the backlash. She got the message, okay? So, you know, don't, like, follow her. Well, what was your a... initial advice to Emily as a professional TikToker? Oh, well, you know, as a professional social media person, I'm not the biggest on TikTok, but my thing is, uh, Emily, stay off TikTok. This is like when Stephen A. Smith is telling NBA players, stay off the weed. You should stay off the jokes. I personally think this is my initial uh, thought. All right, so I think Emily... She was married to an Asian guy. I don't know if she is or now, but anyway, she- well, It sounds like she's not. I feel like if you are in a happy marriage with a full Asian guy, happily looking at your full Asian kids, you don't make this video. Right, you don't post it, all right? Now, a lot of people have had this thought. I get it. Hoppa children, sometimes when they're young and cute, a higher percentage of them seem to be cute. I think because we're all tuned to like Western standards of beauty and all this and that. Right, However, they, 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 were, uh, they have different features. Yes, they have a mixture of features and whatever. That's not to say that your Hoppa baby is guaranteed to be cute, by the way. Especially when they get older, it gets more variable. We we all know some weird looking Hoppas. But anyways, guys, uh, this is besides the fact. But I've heard this before, but it's like for you to post this TikTok and to be addressing younger Asian women, kind of like you're a big sis and like, hey, Asian women, let me put you on some game, all right? If you want gorgeous babies, make a mixed race. It's like, what were you trying to do? Are you a comedian? Because you're not very good at telling jokes, so you should get off of TikTok. This is not a place for bored, uh, I don't wanna say you're a stay-at-home mom, maybe you work, but this is not a place for bored moms to just share their inner thoughts or harshest jokes. Right, right, right. So anyway, guys, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Check out Smile Sauce on Amazon.com. Here's my reads, Andrew. I think she's divorced. Okay. I think That's that, hilarious to, to predict I that, think but. that the Asian guy that she got with potentially, I'm not saying she's that hot or anything like that, but she does have like sharper features. She got like, yeah. Like, she has like a little, you know, that frontal projection. I'm saying that her kids may not have as sharp features as her. She may super value those sharp features due to like how she was raised or like the positioning it gave her within her internal family clan dynamics growing up and feels like, oh my gosh, if my kids were Hoppa, they would have been even prettier, but maybe she, I don't know. Like, Siri, I don't know exactly what she was trying to do, but she sounds unhappy. Yeah, so, okay, safe to say she's unhappy, but I think that uh, obviously this 
caught wind on the Asian male internet. And it is offensive to Asian guys because Asian guys always get told this, that like, oh, well, Asian women, if you want uh, a better life or if you want your kids to have a better life, if you want them to be better looking, you got to get with a non-Asian. And it just perpetuates the stereotypes of undesirable Asian men. So, of course, it is offensive to full Asian guys. And I, and David, you as well, fall under this category of very Asian looking guys. Right. We're not the Asians that, because there are full Asian guys who look hoppa kind of naturally, but on a DNA test would be full Asian. Yeah. Like if you're we, making we, babies with me, you're getting the Asian features. Okay. Right. So just right, so right. you know, so I think like before she posted that TikTok, if she still is married with her husband, she probably I, should have thought about what yeah. her husband would have thought let, about let me it. Think, let me say this. I'll say this. I think that she's unhappy with some of the choices she made in her life, and it seems like she's trying to blame like the full Asian genetics on some of it or, or t channeling it or funneling it that way. I'll say this. I think the reason why this made such a fuss on the internet is because it just goes along with the pattern of what people believe that a lot of women from her generation, and her, uh, this woman is 40 years old, I think a lot of guys are like, man, I, that's like my one cousin. That's like my second cousin. That's like the girl at church. That was the girl in the community growing up who was always super vocal, acting like what we brought to the table was whack and like trying to push away from the community. Right, right. So anyway, let's just take a look at the first. By the way, I think it's getting better. I think that that is a key point, yeah. that there's less people like this girl existing. Yeah. But we do have to acknowledge the, the, the where we're drawing comments from is from a post of this guy reposting this video of her reposting her TikTok, asking the question, why does it seem like Asian women more so than other types of women are always caught talking down on their man? Right. Where it seems like Asian men get the most public, public, disrespect from Asian women more than other yes, groups. Yes, yes. So let's get into the comments section, Andrew. People said, definitely other groups have their own members that do this. They're simply being critically internally, but just nobody feels comfortable putting it out in public as much as Asian women do. Mm, okay. So I actually agree with this. I agree that everybody has qualms about their men and women, but it seems like Asian guys publicly say their qualms. They're, most Asian guys' qualms about Asian women are about Asian women not liking them or selling out. It's not necessarily like Asian guys are like, oh, I don't like think that they have big enough boobs, even though I'm not saying that's not necessarily a trait, but you just never hear Asian guys say that. No, it's not really a complaint from Asian guys, and it's not really a common complaint. Right, so I guess what I'm saying is in other communities, I think there's two things. I think other minority communities, they check themselves before they put out things publicly because they're worried about going against their own race publicly in a way that I think a lot of Asians are, guys and girls are very comfortable going against their own race publicly. And then second of all, I think that when you take a look at other populations, they're much larger in scale. So you're gonna find all voices balanced out. Like there's some white women who hate the power of white men, but like of every single type of white woman, there's at least 5 million each in America because there's like 200 million white people in America. So that changes it as well. Mm -hmm. So like we said, there's a lot of scalability issues um, that come into play that once you understand populations and demographics and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, point number two. Andrew, she just called herself and her own kids ugly. Great job of instilling confidence in your kids. Don't worry, son, daughter. It was just a joke. These are type of jokes that get your kid bullied. Yeah, I don't, I listen, I don't know if her kids are going to see this TikTok because she deleted it, uh, but we did just play it on our channel. So <laughs> I, I guess like uh, it's, I do think it was a joke. I think it was mostly a joke, but really it was a bad joke. And when you post a bad joke, you don't know how people are going to react. So she should stop posting jokes. She is not a comedian. That is not her brand. And she cannot handle the backlash clearly. So don't post those edgy jokes. Because that was an edgy joke in an ethnic format of saying basically right. like, well, you know, my kids are kind of ugly, but ladies here, you got to go get yourself some mixed race babies. That's a pretty edgy joke for a mom that is not a comedian. Right, right, right. Like I said, man, my comedian side is like, I like that you went for it, but 
but just the, the dynamics around it are like, yeesh, this really went bad for you. Yeah. But, uh, point number three, Andrew, this gets into the root of it. And, and this is actually like getting into the anthropological, historical, cultural side of it, explanation, breaking everything down. Somebody said, how come it seems like she's so insecure herself about being Asian and the way Asian features are perceived in Western society? And here's my thing. This is what I truly believe. I do not think she hates being Asian. I don't think she hates her own kids, but I think that she believes her pulled out face, even though she's not really gorgeous, but she does have a very sharp face for an Asian, gave her advantages in life. She may feel bad that her kids don't have those advantages. A lot of Asians that are 40 years old, that means they have parents that are about 70 or 80 years old. Those parents that coached her Emily being 40 are hyper feudalistic. Sometimes that feudalism of just wanting to rise up the imperial ladder gets juxtaposed on a Anglosphere hierarchy. So it's almost like I just want to be closer to the king and the king is white systems and white phenotypical features. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Where I believe that that is ultimately what it's leading to. And she's almost leading her inner thoughts to be like, well, I wish my kids looked more like the rulers of society. Mm. And I think that that's, uh, that's just a lot. It's just more common amongst the 40-year-old women than, than you would think. Yeah. I mean, but she said it, though. No, you know, listen, I mean, I, yeah, I could see a lot of people feeling that deep down, but... Be careful what you post on TikTok. Yeah, and it's common amongst Latinos and, and sometimes black people too, right? The, the Michael B. Jordan has some white features that allow him to be lot, uh, whatever. You know, there's a Latino celebrities, the white looking, less indigenous looking ones get more elevated, even in Latin America or Latin Latino America. Mm -hmm. um, point number four, Andrew. Asian women are the only demographic of women who abuse that my dad was toxic, therefore all Asian men are toxic. Sins of a father. Do you think that's true? She doesn't mention anything about a father. People are saying she must hate her father. Uh, no, I don't know. I mean, I just think that, yes, I do think that uh, for whatever reason, Asian women oftentimes feel more comfortable voicing these things, which I wish they just wouldn't. Yeah. Just don't voice You know it. what I think, honestly, more than Asian fathers being toxic, they were viewed as like uncool and coolness just means so much in America. So whereas another group of women, whatever, let's just say they went through more like metrically toxic situations with their dad, but they're still like think their men are cool. I think it comes down to coolness. Like that's a very hard thing to quantify, but like literally that's just how America works. America runs a lot on coolness and coolness is determined by society and social deviance and et cetera. Anyway, uh, she, this comment said East Asia men have the unfortunate and unique situation of being the most denigrated and disrespected demographic in the Western world. Agree, disagree, Andrew, real quick on that one. That the Asian men are the most denigrated and disrespected group in the Western world in the sense of like, you, you can just dump on them publicly and everybody's just like, ah, you know, uh, yeah, rich dweebs. I, rich. I think considering that, yes, I think Asian men get overly discriminated and discounted and disrespected considering that they are generally always a positive contributor to society. Yeah. Considering we like do everything that you're said taught to do in school or like somewhat boy scouts, I would say maybe not as much like do gooder vibes as boy scouts, but like we follow the rules. Yeah. But Basically just to wrap this up, man, uh, I'll say this, listen, like this is actually, I've actually heard this quote in, person before from a Asian female who does date Asian guys. I've also heard uh, a white girl at work say, oh my gosh, I hope I have an Asian baby because they're so cute. And then I jokingly, this is back when I was younger, I said, oh yeah, well, what about the grown up Asians? And I was like, what do you think about right, that? She Don't was hot, right? She, yeah, was, she like, was kind of attractive and she said that. So obviously part of me, what, what did she say? I, I took it as a compliment, but well, she was married to a white guy. So I think she just kind of laughed it off because- Maybe she didn't want to get into this conversation. But, but anyways, but, but can people separate that the babies are extra or the kids are hyper unique and cool looking versus how they turn out when they get older? You can, right? Sure, sure, sure. But anyways, uh, you got to check your lady or check friends who say this. Even if you have an Asian home girlfriend, friend that is a girl, or an actual Asian girlfriend who has joked about this to you, I would say you need to check them and you need to be like, hey, I get it's a joke, just like, don't make the joke. Like, if we're going to have babies, I don't need to hear this. The kids don't need to hear this. Right. I'm not trying to hear this. I'm not trying to hear this if I'm going to have a kid with you. I know you're kind of joking. I get 
in concept what you're trying to say because Western features, are because I have very Asian features, I don't want to hear it. And you got to just say it and you got to say it firmly because that's the only way people are going right. to get the message. Right. You're saying that it's wrong for, and I don't know if she's still with her husband, to be looking at your kids every day going, you know, they would, get, I wish they had Western, more Western features. Yeah. Cause how is that going to manifest when you're raising them later and you're like, okay, well, at least I'll make my daughter's hair like blonde or at least like maybe she can get a nose job later. Listen, I get it that those are all natural thoughts for adults and- you, uh, they, are, they are passing subconscious yeah. thoughts, right? Yeah, parents who look at their kid that maybe didn't turn out as good looking and they're like, oh my gosh, I really hope that I can make some changes and, and, on but, them. But it also, that's a modern thing for everybody want, wanting their kid to be, like look like a model. Yeah, you know what? It just sets you down a path of some toxic thinking. So I'm just saying you got to nip it in the butt and you got to be like, hey, like, yeah, babe, whatever. When our kids are adults and they want to choose to get whatever modifications, <laughs> that's up to them. But no, I ain't trying to hear this when I'm having kids. Uh, I got to end on this last comment. I'm just going to read the first and the last sentence. How can anyone with a brain cell not see at this point that our societies are subverted and broken from the inside out? How can anyone think it's totally normal when women of our own race are willing to open the gates for the enemy? So how come our communities have long normalized and tolerated this disrespect coming from within? Well, he says Asian women, but is this not enough proof of deliberate, deliberate social engineering meant to destabilize Asian cultures so that we won't pose a threat to the white race? I actually, I'll tell you this, man. I, I could see why this guy took it to this dramatic level. I, and by the way, obviously I'm against what she said, but I just think that the more discussion from the 40 year old women, like this girl, Emily or whatever like that, that where it comes out and she says it, we can just have more discussions about it and try to heal from it. By the way, I do think this pattern of thinking, Andrew, that this girl has that's 40, mm -hmm. less prevalent in 30 year olds and way less prevalent in 20 year olds. Mm. So at the end of the day, we can look at this as a confirmation of the way that things were, but there's no point in being super mad about it and hyper route. If anything, you could just take it as like, oh yeah, things are the way that I thought they were, but don't get all angry and like dox her and attack her about it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If anything, it's good because she's sweeping up the real dust from underneath the, the rug that gets swept underneath the rug. Mm -hmm. And finally, once it's swept out from underneath the rug, we can clean it up. So anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Do not be mean to this girl. Obviously, she's responsible for whatever she puts out there, but don't be like overly mean. Until next time, we the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.